Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about the Spring Boot login configuration. Uh, login is not the core requirement for any business application, but uh, we cannot ignore it because login is very important part of your uh, part of any application for tracking information about application and helpful for developer in debugging the application. In some applications, developers use synchronous logging, which can impact the application's performance. Logging libraries like Logback, uh, Log4j2 provides asynchronous logging and that if you use this logging framework then definitely your performance of uh, your application is going to improve. A Spring Boot provides support for logging and usage common loggings for all internal logging but leaves the underlying log implementation open. Default configurations are provided for Java util logging, log4j2 and logbacks. Logback. In such case loggers are pre-configured to use console output with optional file output also available. By default if you use the uh, a spring uh, boot starter uh, logback, uh, logback will be used for the logging uh, uh, first of all all are going to uh, use default logging by a spring boot right so first of all what i will do let's create a, a small application and we'll try to understand how default logging framework uh, works in the spring boot application so here is the eclipse let's go ahead and let's create a uh, project go to the new and here you have an option it's called a spring starter project if you uh, if you would have installed sts in your eclipse then you'll get this kind of option a spring starter project and here uh, i'm going to give the project name uh, a spring boot logger right and uh, package name I'm gonna specify com dot dot app and I'll that is there and I'll keep same package name and click on the next and here you have a different starter categories different spring boot starter uh, categories so one of the categories called brave so here if you extend and you can select from here or either you can type it over here and you'll get the option so I have selected web so here you can see web is getting selected and nothing I'm going to select uh, anymore so now click on the next and click on the finish so now this project is created in our workspace and uh, corresponding dependent dependent jars will be uploaded from the maven and that is getting uploaded in maven dependency and here uh, you can see a lot of dependencies is added in our class path right so one of the dependencies is called a spring boot a starter logging right so that's take care about the all uh, logging uh, dependent jars which is required uh, for our application right so here if you expand this src main java then in this package uh, we have a, a spring boot strap class right which is annotated as, as the red spring boot application now here what i'll do uh, i'll annotate this class as at the rest controller itself so in that case your uh, bootstrap class works as a bootstrap uh, class as well as rest controller so here so in this uh, video mainly we are focusing on the logging so that's why uh, i'm not going to create a separate controller over here now here just let's create a very small restful resource uh, which will have written as a string and let's say welcome and this restful web service api is going to return uh, a string so this is going to return uh, a string so i would say hello world right and this restful, restful api i'm going to annotate as at the rate the request mapping and here we'll get the base url of our application slice so when uh, we'll hit the base url of our application then hello world we would get on the browser right 
so now what i'll do uh, let's run this project right and before running running this project uh, if you look into the pom.xml if you look into the pom.xml then here uh, nothing so first we have a parent uh, project right so that means our project is the uh, child of this project right a spring boot a starter parent project and here in properties uh, you have a, a source encoding and output encoding uh, utf8 and java version 1.8 so basically uh, now uh, if you look into the de dependencies uh, then we have a, a spring boot starter web because we want to create a web based application right so uh, and you have a dependency for a starter test if you would like to write any kind of test cases then uh, uh, this dependency is for that and finally we have a uh, plugins right so this helps you to generate a executable jar or var file right and but loggers related nothing we have uh, over here right so in pom.xml we do not need to add the logging dependency explicitly because dependency uh, if you look into the dependency a spring boot starter includes the dependencies for uh, logging a spring boot starter logging so if you look into this then you have already added logging stuff a spring boot a starter logging and this includes the dependency for logging a spring uh, boot a starter logging the a spring boot a starter logging includes slf4j and log back dependencies with appropriate slf4j wrappers for other logging libraries so you don't need to really add explicitly loggers related library over here and uh, almost we have created this project let's run this project now so if you go to your uh, application dot properties file then here by default uh, as we have selected a uh, wave as uh, a starter project so tomcat is added in our tomcat dependency jar is also added in our uh, class path if you look into over here then you will get the tomcat related jars over here as well right in video tomcats there are uh, many jars for the tomcat so if i run this application then tomcat is going to run on the default port 8080 if you want to change the port number then you can say server dot port and here let's say 9090 i'm going to specify now our uh, application is going to run on the uh, 9090 so let's run this application and uh, see how default logging uh, comes out in a spring uh, uh, application right so now you can see logger information over here and if you go to the browser and here if you type uh, http colon uh, slash slash localhost colon 9090 and uh, if you hit then you get hello world on the browser like this right and if you uh, investigate your logger i mean uh, console eclipse console then you can see how loggers are getting printed uh, by default in a spring boot application right so here first of all that in, uh, prints uh, basically date and time so milliseconds precision and uh, they have given a time date and date so that is yyy uh, mm and dd format and time is recorded in the millisecond precision and that is, is really sorted manner right so you can see sorted manner you can see and uh, after date and time you have a info and that is nothing but log label so here you may have a error warn info debug trace there are many loggers labels are there and that we are going to discuss no need to worry so as of now default uh, logging level is info that's why you are looking at, at info here over here now what is this number this is a process id basically this represents the process id right so you can see uh, you have a process id which is running uh, so in in the same process you can have a multiple threads right after process id uh, you have a, a triple dash right uh, so basically a separator to distinguish the start of actual log message right and after that in bracket you have a thread name so uh, that is enclosed in the uh, square brackets 
and that may be truncated for the console output sometime so you have a main thread and uh, to run tomcat uh, tomcat is using another thread so we have a different name for tomcat right now after thread you have a logger message right you can see this is logger message big log message so basically uh, this is you can say logger name as well this is usually the uh, source class name uh, and often abbreviate, abbreviated the, this is the log message so uh, the default log uh, label configured by uh, log back uh, is uh, info uh, any message logged at uh, error warn info and debug uh, gets printed on the console right so here I, I came up with a slide and here in the slide you can see uh, if your uh, default uh, if you are setting the, your logging level as info then uh, messages logger messages for fatal error warn and info gets printed now there are different uh, logging levels you have a off means uh, so let's try to understand what is uh, this level says so we have a different levels right so first of all let's talk about the which is uh, uh, off right off is basically uh, off this will uh, java logging this will off the java logging level and has the highest possible rank and it is intended intended to turn off the logging in java now we have a fatal fatal java logging level uh, designates very severe errors events that will uh, presumably lead the application to abort after this mostly your application crashes or stopped we have a next uh, logging level is called error error is more restricted java logging level than warn and is used uh, to log errors and exception you can also set up alert on this java logging level and alert monitoring team to react on this message error is serious for logging in java and you should always print it now next we have a warn warn is more restricted uh, than info java logging level and used to log warning a short of messages like uh, connection lost between the client and server database connection lost socket reaching to its limit uh, these messages and java logging levels are almost important because they can set up alert on these logging messages in java and let your uh, support team monitor health of your java application and react this this warning messages in summary a warn level is used to log warning messages for logging in java then you have a info info is more restricted than debug uh, java logging level and uh, we should log messages which are uh, informative informative purpose like server has has been uh, has been started incoming messages outgoing messages etc in info level logging in java uh, then we have a uh, next level is called uh, trace the trace level designates uh, finer uh, gained informational events than the debug and finally you have all uh, so all level has the lowest possible rank and is intended to turn on all logging levels so these are the levels you have in uh, logging framework mainly right so in this video we have talked about the some basics about the uh, spring uh, boot uh, logging configuration right uh, we have just created a demo project and we have seen how default le le level is working uh, def default logging level is working in uh, a spring boot application right uh, in next video we are going to look uh, how to customize default configuration for logging so uh, I hope you enjoyed learning this video. If you really like this video, then please hit on the like button and subscribe my YouTube channel. So thanks for watching this video and see you next video tutorial.